The movie begins on a very dark and spooky night. There's a young girl named Sophie, and she's all alone doing her work. Out of nowhere, she hears some strange noises coming from outside the orphanage where she lives. Curious and a bit scared, she opens a window to see what's going on. What she sees is a group of rowdy, drunk men wandering around in the street. Sophie, being a brave girl, decides to tell them to be quiet because the other kids in the orphanage are trying to sleep. She warns them that if they don't hush, she'll call the police. The drunk men get scared and quickly run away. After that little adventure, Sophie goes back to her bed and begins reading a storybook. As she's lost in her book, she suddenly hears footsteps outside her window. This startles her, and she quickly hides under her blanket to stay safe. The night is filled with mystery and a touch of fear, setting the stage for what's to come in the story. Sophie was determined to uncover the source of those eerie noises. With cautious curiosity, she approached the window, carefully setting aside her cozy blankets. What awaited her on the other side of the glass was beyond her wildest imagination, and it filled her with a deep, bone-chilling fear. Standing there in the midst of that dark and ominous night was an immense and frightening giant. His colossal presence seemed otherworldly, casting long, ominous shadows across the dimly lit street. Sophie's heart raced, and her eyes widened in sheer terror as she took in the sight. The giant, with hands that could easily encompass her entire world, spotted Sophie. In a sudden, heart-pounding moment, he reached in through the window, plucking her from her safe haven beneath the blankets. Sophie's fear intensified, and she was paralyzed by the giant's overpowering grip. Before she could react, the giant swiftly carried her away into the darkness, leaving the safety of her familiar surroundings behind. As he ran with her cradled in his massive hand, the world outside transformed into a mysterious and menacing place, shrouded in an unsettling and eerie atmosphere. It was the beginning of a chilling adventure beyond anything Sophie had ever imagined. Sophie tried to escape from a place, but she accidentally dropped some things, making a big giant notice her. The giant tried to scare her by saying he might eat her, but Sophie remained calm. She began asking him questions in a gentle manner. She mentioned that she was an orphan and shared that she was unhappy in the orphanage where the owner was cruel and punished innocent children. Curious, Sophie asked the giant why he chose to take her. He explained that if he didn't, she might tell the world about encountering a giant like him. Sophie pleaded with him, promising not to tell anyone, and asked to be set free. Unfortunately, the giant declined her request. The giant sat down on a chair and used a magnifying glass to read a book, which amazed Sophie. She asked if he could read and was so captivated by the story he was telling that she fell asleep. While she slept, the giant quietly left to go to a mysterious place where he conducted experiments. The scene changed, and Sophie woke up feeling frightened, only to discover a giant sleeping nearby. She thought this was her chance to escape, so she sneaked away from the giant's cave. However, on her journey, she encountered a wicked giant who tried to harm her and eat her. She screamed loudly for help, and it seemed like the evil giant consumed her. But then, she realized it was just a scary dream. The girl soon realized that the scary dream had been given to her by the big giant. She asked him why he did it, and he explained that he wanted to teach her not to run away, as it could get her into trouble. While they were talking, another giant appeared and asked them big giant if someone was in the house. The big giant said no. However, the new giant, who was not very nice, began to act rudely. He sensed a strange smell and suspected it was the scent of a human. He looked around but couldn't find Sophie, who managed to hide. Eventually, the unfriendly giant left. The kind giant brought Sophie to a mysterious place where he stored jars filled with magical dreams. He helped her take a bath to get cleaned up and then offered her some clothes to wear. Sophie chose a red jacket, which made the giant emotional, and he began to cry. When Sophie asked him why he was crying, he didn't want to explain but said he was going to work. Curious, Sophie inquired about the type of work the giant did, and he revealed that he captured dreams. Excited, Sophie expressed her desire to go with him, but he initially refused due to the dangers outside. Sophie persistently asked him, making a humble request he couldn't turn down, until he agreed to take her along. In one scene, there were many giants peacefully sleeping on the grassy ground. However, trouble arose when the good giant stumbled, waking up the mean giants. Sophie managed to hide in a car among the grassy fields. These nasty giants treated the good giant very poorly. They even tossed him around like a football and came up with a cruel game. They put the good giant on a car at one end of a mountain cliff, while another bad giant stood on the opposite cliff, using two cars like a wheel. Sophie was in one of these cars. 
Just as the good giant and the bad giant were about to meet, Sophie turned the steering wheel to the left, causing the bad giant to take a nasty fall. The good giant noticed the sky and pointed out that it was about to rain. True to his prediction, it began to rain, causing the mean giants to run for cover. The good giant took Sophie with him. Unfortunately, the mean giants found Sophie's jacket, smelled it, and recognized the human scent. In the next scene, Sophie felt worried about how the mean giants had treated the good giant. They arrived at a magnificent place known as Dreamland. Sophie was captivated by the beauty and grandeur of the place, where they captured dreams. The giant encouraged her to catch a dream, and she eagerly chased after them. After a bit of effort, she managed to catch one dream, but the giant suggested it might be a bad dream. In response, Sophie decided to call him, BFG, from that moment onwards. The narrative gracefully transitioned, transporting Sophie and the good giant to a quaint house, where a slumbering young boy lay in blissful ignorance of their presence. With a twinkle in his eye, the good giant turned to Sophie, inquiring about her heartfelt wish. Her reply was simple yet profound. She longed to bring happiness to the sleeping child, a desire rooted in kindness and empathy. With his extraordinary abilities, the gentle giant wove a dream of whimsy and laughter, a gift that graced the boy's dreams, painting a joyful smile upon his slumbering face. The journey continued as the duo ventured forward, their steps guided by fate and their shared sense of purpose. A subtle rustling of footsteps broke the silence, alerting them to the ominous presence of the malevolent giants, whose cruel intentions cast a shadow of danger. Concern for Sophie's well-being gnawed at the good giant, leading to a difficult decision. Fearing for her safety, he contemplated returning Sophie to the orphanage, a place of familiarity but not the happiness he wished for her. Yet Sophie's spirit shone brightly, her determination unwavering, as she passionately insisted on staying by the side of her colossal friend. Her persistence illuminated her courage, drawing a touching contrast to the giant's own memories of a lost opportunity. He reminisced about a past encounter with a boy who had gifted him the power of literacy, igniting a flame of knowledge within him. The chance to reunite with that boy was forever out of reach, and the thought of reliving such heartache was too much for him to bear. With tears glistening in his eyes, he made the painful decision to part ways with Sophie, an act of sacrifice fueled by love and the desire to protect her from harm. Sophie remembered the unique power of the good giant, the ability to hear the unspoken and feel the emotions in one's heart. She called out to him, and with determination, she climbed onto a railing. Swiftly, the good giant reached out, gently scooping her up in his enormous hands, rescuing her once again. Meanwhile, the mean giants, driven by their desperate search for Sophie, forcibly entered the home of the good giant. In their frantic quest, they recklessly destroyed the jars filled with precious dreams. This devastated the good giant, who pleaded with them not to harm his hard-earned work. They scoured the place for Sophie but could not locate her. Eventually, the good giant managed to persuade them to leave his house, averting further damage. The scene shifted seamlessly to Sophie and the giant, who worked in tandem to craft a dream of profound significance. One intended to convey their heartfelt message to none other than the esteemed Queen of England. With meticulous care, they ingeniously intertwined various dreams, weaving them into a tapestry of meaning and power. Their dedication and creativity shone through as they labored on this dream creation. Once their labor of love was complete, Sophie and the giant embarked on a journey that would lead them to the grandeur of the royal palace. The palace, with its towering spires and resplendent architecture, stood as a testament to the history and prestige of the British monarchy. Upon their arrival at the palace, they faced the challenging task of delivering this carefully constructed dream to the slumbering queen herself. It was an awe-inspiring moment as the queen slowly awakened from her deep sleep. Her face was etched with a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, for she had just been immersed in a dream of disquieting proportions. In this distressing dream, the queen bore witness to a world where fearsome giants, the very beings she had only heard of in legends, snatched away innocent children and consumed them. The vivid imagery of this nightmare was haunting, leaving her deeply troubled and in need of someone to confide in. She turned to her loyal assistant, sharing the burdensome dream that had plagued her rest. This pivotal moment marked the intersection of two worlds, one inhabited by the Queen of England and the other by Sophie and the Giant, brought together by a shared sense of responsibility, compassion, and the desire to protect the innocent. It was the beginning of a remarkable journey that would reshape destinies and create a legacy of courage and unity. Intriguingly, the Queen's gaze fell upon Sophie, who stood outside her ornate window, a figure of determination and hope. 
Sophie extended her hand, a silent plea for assistance and collaboration in their grand mission. Approaching the queen with unwavering resolve, Sophie presented a request to introduce the benevolent giant who had played a pivotal role in their extraordinary journey. Astonishingly, before their eyes, the gentle giant materialized, a towering figure of kindness and empathy. The queen, in all her regal splendor, extended a warm invitation, ushering them into the opulent corridors of her palace. There, they were met with the opulence and generosity of her royal court, where a delectable feast awaited, as well as an array of sumptuous garments to adorn themselves. With characteristic decisiveness, the queen promptly dispatched her elite forces and a fleet of powerful helicopters, mobilizing them to confront and quell the menace posed by the malevolent giants. Their nefarious deeds would not go unpunished. The mean giants, perpetrators of countless misdeeds and terror, found themselves apprehended and brought to justice, their reign of fear vanquished. The reign of justice and safety was ushered in, bringing an end to their malevolence. In the palace, Sophie embraced her newfound life, brimming with happiness and security, forever grateful for the queen's benevolence. In a picturesque turn of events, the good giant, once again finding solace and purpose, delved into the serene world of farming, cultivating a bountiful array of fresh, wholesome vegetables to sustain them. And so, the story culminated in a harmonious symphony of compassion, collaboration, and victory over malevolence, leaving a legacy of courage and unity for generations to come.